why are MCTs considered just this hero in the ketogenic world and just in general? Why are we seeing them in so many different supplements, so many different products? Why are they marketed so much? Well, it's not just because they're trendy. Okay, MCTs have really unique properties within the body. They are a form of fat, but they're a very unique fat in their own league of their own, really. Okay, how they are metabolized, how they are utilized is very unique and they give us energy really quickly. So this is going to be a breakdown because they're not all created equal. When you look at the world of MCTs, you have multiple, you have four different kinds of MCTs that you can choose from and they all have different roles within the body. It's truly fascinating and you need to understand the fat science. So we'll break it all down. I do want to make sure you hit that red subscribe button, hit that little bell icon to turn on notifications so you never miss a beat. So let's go ahead and let's dive in. So in order for any of this to make sense, you have to know that there are really three different classifications of fats in the first place. Short chain fatty acids, medium chain triglycerides or medium chain fatty acids, and long chain fatty acids. Okay, and they all have different lengths of carbon chains. Here's what I mean by that. When we look at fats, they have what are called carbon tails. Okay, they are strings of carbon atoms that are at the end of a fat. Okay, a short chain fatty acid, just like the name implies, has zero to five carbon chains. They're short chain. Then we have a medium chain triglyceride or a medium chain fatty acid that has six to 12 carbons. So basically it's a medium length tail, right? And then we have long chain fatty acids. And these are like the typical fats, like the oils and the olive oils and whatever, things like that. And there's gonna be anywhere from 12, 13, all the way up to 21, 22 carbons. And those take longer to break down. Okay, so what we have to remember is that fats have different lengths of time in which they break down and are utilized within the body. Not all fats are created equal. If you consume some olive oil and you consume some MCTs, what they do in your body is radically different, comparable to what it would be like if you consumed pure glucose, pure sugar versus a sweet potato. Totally different worlds. The problem is up until recently, no one wanted to look at fats because fats were just bad and we didn't care. Now there's a lot of emerging research. So without further ado, let's look at the MCT classifications. So we have C6, which is caproic acid. Now C6, is going to absorb the fastest because it's the shortest chain. However, it's really hard to consume C6 because it causes serious gastric distress. You don't even see it in research a lot because it's hard to consume. Then we have C8, which is caprylic. Okay, caprylic or C8 is the most efficient and probably the best when it comes down to getting your ketone levels elevated. Why? Because it's short, but it's just ever so slightly long enough to be able to absorb and not just like just radically dis disrupt your stomach. And I'll explain more of this in a minute. Then we have C10, which is capric. Okay, capric is more used in like antifungal situations, really good at combating yeast, really good at combating different upper intestinal issues. However, when it comes down to ketone formation, which I'll talk about more in a minute too, it just doesn't seem to, it kind of misses the mark a little bit for some reason or another. Okay, then we have C12. C12 is lauric acid, and you've probably heard lauric acid talked about in the world of coconut oil. Okay, a good percentage of coconut oil is made up of lauric acid, and although it's technically an MCT, it's unique because it's saturated, whereas the other MCTs are oils, lauric acid is more saturated. Anyhow, I digress. Let's go ahead and break down why they're different. Okay, MCTs are not stored as fat. What? No, they're not stored as fat. That means that they get absorbed by the system immediately and converted into ketones or used as fuel by the organs and tissues almost immediately. Whereas ordinarily a long chain fatty acid is gonna get mobilized, it's gonna get transported by cliomicrons and it's eventually going to end up either having to get burned or potentially, unfortunately, stored as body fat. Does this mean that you cannot get fat when you consume a lot of MCTs? False, you absolutely can get fat. It is still a calorie, thermodynamics still apply. So don't think that you have a free reign to just consume as much MCT as you want. Let me explain something really briefly here. When you consume glucose, like carbohydrates, usually what happens is it has to be combined with L-carnitine in order to get into a cell and to actually produce acetyl coenzyme A. When you consume MCTs, you don't need the carnitine. I'm trying to make this video simple. So basically what that means is MCTs have a unique ability to get right into the cell. If you looked at how complex it is to actually use and manufacture energy from food, it's complicated. So the fact that MCTs go right through the intestinal wall and go right into the cell to create energy or right into the liver to create ketones is 
actually nothing short of miraculous. It's really cool. And the research, quite honestly, is still somewhat inconclusive as to why they operate the way they do. But we're starting to get there. So let's break down how they convert to ketones and which form of MCT is going to be best. Because that's probably the question that you're wondering. Hey, I want to get my ketones elevated. Hey, I want energy from fat. Which ketones should I consume? So this study was published in the Current Developments of Nutrition. Okay, and it took a look at all the different MCTs and compared how quickly they elevated ketone levels, but also how those ketones ultimately converted into truly usable ketones. Okay, so they compared coconut oil to C8 MCT oil to C10 MCT oil. Then they also compared uh, coconut oil plus C8 C10. And lastly, they compared a uh, general MCT oil, which is usually a blend of all the different MCTs, the C8, the C10, and the C12. So they gave subjects 20 milliliters of these oils, and they suspended it with a little bit of milk. It's complicated why, it's just a better carrier. I know it doesn't make sense. Why would they give it to them with milk? But point is, they wanted to measure which one elevated ketones the best. Well, it turned out that C8 triggered the highest plasma ketone increase from zero to four hours and from four to eight hours postprandial. So after consuming them, they found that C8 elevated ketones the highest. Okay, just to give you a matter of comparison, coconut oil only elevated ketones 25% of that. It goes to show that the faster the absorbing, the MCT, the higher our ketones get and the faster they get there. But the caveat, the interesting thing, is that when you take C8 and you combine it with coconut oil, there seem to be some pretty cool responses. It turns out that coconut oil triggered a higher conversion of acetoacetate to beta-hydroxybutyrate. That's complicated. Basically what it means is coconut oil helped the fats turn into a truly usable form of ketones. Because we have multiple variations of ketones, acetoacetate, beta-hydroxybutyrate, and acetone, beta-hydroxybutyrate is the one that we want elevated the most. So it turns out that when you combine some C8 with some coconut oil, you not only get the spike really quick from the C8, but you also get the conversion that happens from the coconut oil. So the end of the matter is, Coconut oil is great, C8 is a little bit faster. Not a lot of products that have good amounts of C8. I will say, if you wanna check out a product that has a really high quality straight C8 caprylic acid, HVMN has really hit the mark with this. So I don't recommend MCT oils or MCT oil powders a whole lot, but I do have to really go out on a limb and recommend them because they've done a good job with this. So I personally love their chocolate MCT. Went ahead, I put a link down below. This way, if you're trying to mess around with your ketones and you wanna see, hey, how high can I get my ketones? Can I you know, experiment a little bit? You wanna use this one because a lot of times the MCTs out there are blends. And like I've said with blends, you don't know what you're getting. You're getting C8, C10, and C12, which means that you are actually limiting yourself from getting that fast absorption. So anyhow, check them out down below. It's the cleanest C8 that you're gonna find, and there's a special discount for anyone that's watching these videos and anyone that's a Tom Stillauer fan. So link down below in the description, but make sure that you watch the rest of this video first so that you actually have a practical application to use the C8 properly. So to build a little bit more on the C8, C8 not only had the highest net ketogenic effect, but what's wild is that other studies have shown that it has a really powerful effect in terms of anti-inflammatory effects in the gut. You see, after consuming C8, subjects seem to have lower levels of interleukin-8. Okay, kind of a cascade result of just lower gut inflammation. Now, I have two theories as to why this could occur. One, C8 is so simple and gentle to absorb that it doesn't trigger any gut inflammation. It gives your gut a break. But I think the stronger reasoning is the fact that C8 drove ketones up so high and ketones have a natural anti-inflammatory mechanism that we were able to reduce inflammation in the gut quite significantly. Now, I bet you if you looked at other markers within the body, you'd see that C8 probably drove inflammation down throughout the body, not just in the gut. Perhaps it was just being measured there. So C8 has really powerful anti-inflammatory effects, which I personally find fascinating because that's my personal journey and why I'm literally here in front of you today because I was chasing down controlling inflammation in mine and my wife's body. Let's look at the other MCTs for just a second. So C10 
is more known as like an antifungal, right? So if you have candida or if you have a yeast infection, things like that, C10 is the one that you want to focus on. And a concentrated form of C10, which quite frankly is not the easiest thing to find, but you're not going to get a huge ketogenic effect out of it. It's much more of an antimicrobial. Now, in the same vein as antimicrobial, let's talk about lauric acid for a second. Okay, lauric acid or C12 is going to be the one that you're going to get out of coconut oil. And yes, the studies have shown that coconut oil is going to drive up the conversion of acetoacetate to beta hydroxybutyrate the best. But what's wild is that although lauric acid is technically a medium chain triglyceride, it acts as a long chain triglyceride or long chain fatty acid in the body. What do I mean by that? Okay, this is where it gets a little complicated. So if you're not super scientific or you don't want the science, it's all good. You can tune out or you can skip ahead or whatever, or check out some of the other videos that I've linked down below in the description. But let's get a little bit scientific for a second. So lauric acid, that form of MCT, is absorbed and utilized in a different way. 75% of the lauric acid that you consume when you consume coconut oil gets absorbed via cliomicrons. What that means is that it's acted in the body just like a regular fat is, yet it still seems to have a powerful benefit. 25% or so of the coconut oil that you consume is absorbed as a standard MCT. So what that means is when you look at 100% of coconut oil, 25% of it is getting absorbed uh, just like a normal MCT would, where it's just rapid absorption. 75% is getting absorbed via these little transport molecules that take fats from the intestine to the liver. Okay, that's all there is to it. So, and then ultimately around the body too. So why is it that coconut oil still drives ketones up so high? We don't really know. Okay, it's like it's able to get ketones out to other areas of the body because they ride on the cleidomicrons, but at the same time, it's just it's wild. We honestly don't really know why, but it's pretty interesting. So cliomicrons transport triglycerides. I have other videos that break that down in a little bit more detail. The end all be all of what I am saying here is do not get cheap MCTs, okay? Cheap MCTs don't really do the trick. You wanna focus on getting good quality C8. In some cases, C8, C10, depends on what you're after. And almost always combine something with coconut oil because you're not going to get that same effect unless you have some coconut oil in it, unless your goal is just to drive up your ketones as fast as you can. So for example, like if you wanna just get brain power up really high, you could jam a bunch of C8 really quick and just drive your brain up, okay? That's kind of like some of these people out there that really use keto for cognitive function. They'll just slam their C8s because they just get this big raise in like mental awareness and ketone levels. Anyhow, I digress. Point is, there's a lot of information out there, a lot of different fats that we can look at. I encourage you to check out some of my other videos. And again, if you wanna try some good C8, check out HVMN down below in the description. So as always, I appreciate you being here and I'll see you in the next video.